Hey Patrick, can you bring me the case we're reviewing? Oh yeah. It's still plugged in, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Anything can be a computer if you try hard enough. A couple of months ago, we ordered a product that got delayed for a global shipping delay caused by something we can't quite pin down. It's the Barrow CH wheel, which is literally a car wheel, except with some mounting holes and a motherboard tray attached. And tempered glass, because that's what makes a case these days. We've seen modders build these out of actual car wheels, but we want to emphasize that this is technically a computer case that's sold ready-made to house a computer, no mods required. And today we're going to be building in the Barrowch wheel, as it's called, to see how it does. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly's Conductonaut Liquid Metal. Conductonaut is what we've used in all of our liquid metal and D-lit thermal tests, capable of dropping CPU thermals significantly when replacing the stock thermal interface. Lower CPU thermals don't just allow better overclocks, but also lower noise levels because the transfer efficiency is increased. The mix of gallium and indium makes for a thermal conductivity of 73 watts per meter Kelvin, outclassing traditional pastes significantly. Learn more at the link in the description below. This is definitely an instance of, yo dog, we heard you like computers. So we put a computer in your car. Except with this, we could put four computers in your car. Well, under your car. But either way, today we make the leap from becoming computer reviewers to car guys. I think, I, th I think this is what it takes. Jay, is this what it takes? Before we start the review properly, I need to get this case into the correct position so that I can film. There we go, that should just, let me just get my wheel chocks in there. If nothing else, this case has been one of the most convenient to move around. Not to work with, it sucks for that, a lot, but it's easy to, to move around from one room to the other, and it is quite heavy. In fact, this wheel uh, suggests that it can support something like 700 kilograms of weight. We'll get to that later. But this is, in fact, a genuine car wheel, and it has in fact been adapted by a computer component company, Barrow, to become a case. And that's really all you need to know about the basics. It's $560, brand new. And with the current economy, we're hoping that we can save up enough for three more of these wheels by 2022, so that we can build a full car made out of computer wheels. In the meantime, to ease the transition, the wheel happens to come with a motherboard tray. So this case is courtesy of Barrow, the water cooling company. Either way, we can't stress enough that this is literally a wheel. It's the wheel and the rim, it's a single piece. You can have a healthy debate in the comments section about what you want to call it. We've heard that the car enthusiast community is just as healthy and alive as the computer enthusiast community. We're gonna use the terms interchangeably though. And either way, this is an item that was originally destined to be installed in a car. It's not like they made this for a computer first. It's probably defect stock, maybe it's got scratches, this one does have a few, or something like that. And so for one reason or another, a car company or a wheel company didn't want to use it as what it was made for originally, and they sold it to Barrow as a computer case. And the ways you can tell this is actually a wheel, on the inner lining of the outer part of the rim here, there's a rating for 690 kilograms. Uh, it is an 18 inch rim, and we couldn't afford 22s, those are just too much for us. Although it would make building a lot easier. It's an idea for you, Barrow. And it's also got the JWL and JWLT markings to make everything clear. So this is uh, something that they've basically attached a tempered glass sheet to. They've drilled some holes in the back for mounting a motherboard tray to, and then have supplied a motherboard tray separately, which is functionally just a test bench tray, except it's been fit inside of this. Barrow is a brand owned by Dezhou Zhongjia Hardware Company Limited, and Barrow was the name of the northernmost city in the United States, with an average February temperature of minus 25.7 degrees Celsius. And Barrow is a liquid cooling hardware manufacturer that seemingly named itself after this for its low temperatures, something Barrow, the company, promises with its liquid cooling products. Barrow, the city, changed its name back to Utkiavik in 2016, but Barrow the manufacturer chose not to follow suit for reasons which are not immediately clear. Barrowch is an upscale sister brand of Barrow, with a C for China and an H for high end. We're going to affectionately call them Barrowch. Rims are meant to be installed on cars, if you weren't aware, typically with a piece of rubber around them, known as a tire. Like we said, anything's a computer if you try hard enough, and no rim has ever been designed for the purpose of fitting a motherboard inside, at least 
not by the wider market. We've seen a couple mods online lately, and they're pretty cool. They might be better than this, actually. Uh, and they weren't, um, they weren't sold as computer cases. But professional case reviewers, such as ourselves, notice a couple of unique things that the average person might not. We, of course, have the skills required to know that wheels are round, sort of shaped like, like this, like a circle. And motherboards are rectangular, like this. And typically, these things might stop someone from installing a motherboard into a wheel. It's a unique puzzle. But Baroch has figured out, actually, they haven't figured out how to solve it. Let's get into Patrick's build notes for the case. And we'll talk thermals, because this is not a good one for thermals. And then we'll go through the conclusion of if it's worth it. This is the most difficult to build in case we've ever reviewed, including all of the small form factor ones, like the Cryrig Taku, which was like building inside of an Ikea shelf. Assembling the test system took an entire seven hours, off and on, and we'll dig into the reasons why. But let's just say this up front. This case is only meant for water cooling, open loop, and even that doesn't really work. Don't buy this case with the intention of using an air cooler or a CLC on either the GPU or the CPU. Don't even try it. The accessory kit included with the speed is mostly just the usual screws and washers. But there's one unique item, two heavy rubber cubes and adhesive pads. These are literally wheeled chocks for the case because without them, the computer is free to roll off of the desk and onto a floor, upon which it'd probably leave a wheel-sized hole in the floor because it's a car wheel, if that wasn't already drilled in. The speed case is comprised of four main parts. The rim itself, a front tempered glass panel, an aluminum motherboard tray, and an aluminum rear cover or radiator mount. There's no reason to remove the glass panel from the rim, so together they're essentially a single part. The product listing also mentions an alternate tempered glass rear cover to replace the aluminum one meant for use with air-cooled systems, but this isn't included for the case if it shipped after July of 2019, so we didn't receive one. Using the second glass panel would eliminate all fan and radiator mounts from the case. Documentation suggests that removing the inner nested motherboard tray and flipping it over on top of the rim to assemble the system, then flipping the complete build back over for installation is the way to go. That seemed like an unnecessary gimmick at first, but it turned out to be a good idea. The rim reinforces the tray and keeps the legs from being smashed down by the weight of the system. Almost every component in the system is attached to the motherboard tray. Nothing except the power button mounts to the rim, and only the fans and radiators attach to the rear cover, making it optional if air cooling is used. In a sense, it's a self-contained test bench that could be dropped into any appropriately sized enclosure, and that enclosure just so happens to be a rim from a car. We assume it's not stolen, but this would probably be an excellent way to fence your stolen car rims, assuming you could station yourself outside of a nearby micro center that shares a parking lot with discount tire. Before taking the rear plate or the motherboard tray out of the rim, we recommend clearly marking the edge of every piece so that they can be easily indexed with each other when putting the case back together. Although recommendations are pointless because not many people will buy this from our review. With the motherboard tray out and balanced on top of the rim, we began the process of building. Motherboard standoffs aren't something we ever put any thought into beyond the eternal struggle of guessing the correct thread count. But the speed standoffs are bizarrely elaborate for no discernible reason. They look almost normal, but with small protrusions at the top that look like they should fit through the screw holes on the motherboard. They do not. Instead, a plastic washer is placed on top of the standoffs that's included, the motherboard is placed on top of this, another clear plastic washer is placed on top, and then a spring-tensioned screw, like the ones used in GPU coolers, is used to fasten down the motherboard. That's insane. No one does that. As far as we can tell, the end result is exactly the same as if normal screws were used. Standoffs are only placed around the edge of the board, so there's no support for the board at the center. On top of this, the motherboard tray isn't especially flat. The motherboard didn't make good contact with all the standoffs until the screws were tightened down. Next up is the GPU. Because Barrow ch chose to house the PSU within the body of the case, the motherboard tray is pushed very close to the glass side panel, with minimal clearance for GPU and CPU coolers. Normal width GPUs must be mounted vertically, and there are no PCIe supports for anything else, just riser cables and a two-slot vertical mount. 
This is the first clue that this case is made exclusively for open loop cooling, even though they don't advertise it that way. Mounting an air-cooled GPU with the fans pressed up against a glass panel is a terrible idea, and it always has been, as we've proven in the past numerous times with actual real ATX cases that insist upon doing so. As always though, the manufacturer couldn't resist posting some marketing images with air-cooled GPUs. So this is a valid test of something that the manufacturer implied as a build approach. The GPU mount was also our first encounter with another feature of the speed case. There are hex head screws used throughout the case and not one, not two, but three distinct head sizes. You might think that this was a mistake and that maybe some car parts got mixed in, but no. Barrowch hopefully includes three Allen wrenches with the case as if taunting the builder with the idea that not one thing can be easy or normal. The best reason we can think of for their universally bizarre screw choices, including the motherboard screws that are actually GPU screws, is that Barrowch is primarily an open loop water cooling company named Barrow. So it makes sense that they'd have a bunch of standoffs meant for GPU block mounting and hex head screws commonly used in water cooling parts. For a case that costs more than $500 though, we think they could have sprung for some normal case hardware. You can buy boxes of it for literally pennies in SEGE market. So there's no excuse. The screw holes for securing the graphics card are tapped directly into the aluminum motherboard tray. So a gentle touch is needed to keep them from cross threading. There's a zip tie pre-looped around the mount as a crude replacement for a locking tab. Some credit is due for leaving an air gap around the edges of the circular glass panel, but without any internal fans to circulate air or create a pressure differential, the gap can't do much. Unfastening the glass and leaving it off entirely is a tempting option, especially since dust filtration is already non-existent and the spokes of the wheels shield the internal components. But every piece removed from this case brings it closer to being something that you could buy at AutoZone and modify with a drill. And we're here to review a PC case, not a wheel. There's not much clearance to the panel, even for open loop water cooling, and these downdraft coolers are tall enough to be almost flush with the glass, and there's not enough clearance for a tower cooler at all. Knowing that, we opted to use a closed loop liquid cooler for our CPU. This proved much more difficult than expected, and it's the main reason this build took so long. First off, the fan and radiator mounts on the rear of the case are two 120 by 240 millimeter mounts placed side by side, and they're only compatible with 120 and 240 mil parts. 140 and 280 parts kind of fit if they're mounted sideways across the mount, but don't count on it. Secondly, this case does not support CLCs in any form. Radiators must be mounted on the rear of the case, and cold plates obviously have to be mounted on the inside of the case on the motherboard. So the CLC must have a pump and cold plate assembly that's thin enough to pass through one of the motherboard tray cutouts from one side to the other, about three centimeters tops. The tubes must be long enough to wrap all the way around the motherboard and to the radiator on the back of the case and above the power supply. Because the radiator mounts are directly above the PSU mount, if a full ATX power supply is used, there's no space to route the tubes. We were only able to get a CLC mounted by swapping in a small form factor Enermax power supply. Judging by marketing images, the intended configuration is to have a radiator mounted on the rear of the case with the barbs facing out and a bunch of right angle bends to get the tubes routed back into the case through one of a couple cutouts on the rear cover. The power supply must be mounted with the fan facing out if you want it to get any air at all. And as we mentioned, the radiator mounts directly over the power supply. Therefore, the only viable fan configuration is intake, and you're either pushing or pulling air through the radiator and into the power supply. The case layout is extremely rigid in order to make a usable system without breaking the rules by altering the case or mounting things incorrectly. You have to use an ATX power supply, you have to use open loop cooling, you have to use a vertically mounted GPU, and two radiators mounted barbs out with the tubes routed through a specific cutout and fans arranged as intake is the only option for cooling. Modding the case is always an option, of course, and is probably what you should do with this product, but for this price, it'd be more economical, again, to just buy a literal rim and start from scratch. You might even be able to do a better job with the mounting. Barrow does make multiple mentions of air cooling support, GPU air cooling support, so forth on its product page, but again, it's a terrible idea. In fact, they had an entire part of the case that was designed for air-cooled systems exclusively. None of this would have been such a big deal if it were easier to replace parts. Instead, almost every change required completely disassembling the system. If you wanted 
change the liquid cooler, for example, or modify the block or whatever, swapping CLCs involves removing the rear cover, removing all the screws, attaching the motherboard tray to the rim, lifting the system out and flipping it, unmounting and unplugging the GPU, unplugging the power button, unmounting the cold plate, unmounting the motherboard to the thread, the cold plate and pump assembly, back through the hole in the motherboard tray, and then repeating in reverse. Remember that all of the motherboard standoffs are also composed of a standoff, two washers, and a spring tension screw. The thought of trying to get an open loop arranged in this case is nightmarish. And the biggest problem is that really to do it right, you need to have kind of a, a store or a stockpile of components that you can work with. If you pre-select stuff, because there's no documentation on this, it's not like it's a commonly used case online, you're gonna have a hard time figuring out what precisely fits and what doesn't. And so fitting everything's the biggest challenge. And again, if you have bins and bins of open loop stuff and your name is Jay's Two Cents and you also own a Camaro, then you'd probably do well with this case. But if you have to buy everything to start from scratch, there is a good chance that you'll have some difficulty somewhere. Front IO is kind of fun on this one. <laughs> the speed has only one thing on front IO and it's a power button. That's it. No audio jacks, no USB ports, nothing other than a hole for the valve stem of a tire, which isn't included. Moreover, since the motherboard is buried deep inside the rim, none of the rear I.O. is easily accessible either. Display and internet cables must be plugged in before final assembly, and an external USB hub is strongly recommended if you ever want to use the USB devices that are made accessible by your motherboard. We're getting to the thermal section now, and this can't fit our normal tower cooler, so we didn't build our usual test system in it, therefore none of the results are comparable to previous test results for cases of any size. For hardware, we used an X570 Master, AMD R93900X, Gigabyte 5700XT, 4 8 Gigabyte 3200 megahertz G-Skill Trident C RGB memory sticks. The CPU cooler was an older 140 mil NDXT X41 cooler that we dug out of a bin in a desperate search for a cooler that would actually fit. And the power supply was an Enermax 650 watt Revolution SFX because it's one of the highest wattage SFF power supplies that we had that wasn't being used. Again, this case is built for full ATX power supplies, but if we used, or if you use, a full ATX power supply, you would either have issues with jury rigging the cooler from the CPU or feeding air into or out of the power supply uh, via the radiator next to it. For the radiator, we attached a 2500 RPM EK Furious Vardar Evo fan. It's a really high RPM fan, and it's the only fan in the entire case, so that's why we used it. We kept the pump and case fan at 100% for testing, for speeds, and again, that's about 2,500 RPM. The GPU fan was at about 55%, so reported speed just over 3,000 RPM. This is a loud build. Further, uh, we attempted testing with GPU fans left on auto, and that resulted in crashes. It just wasn't good enough. We might as well start with the worst thermals. Beginning with the air-cooled GPU, which is, again, one of the build options marketed by the company, we see the GPU edge temperatures for Gigabyte 5700 XT at about 90 degrees Celsius. Not delta T over ambient, mind you, just 90 degrees. We're only measuring one thing, so there's not much point doing deltas. Ambient was about 22 degrees Celsius. GPU junction temperature, which is what Navi uses to throttle, is hitting 113 degrees Celsius and is past TJ Maxx. TJ Maxx is 110. So not only are we experiencing clock dropping that will require a different chart for analysis, we're also still above TJ Maxx. The GPU VRM MOSFET temperatures are at about 90 degrees Celsius in this test, equaling the GPU edge temperature. That's within operating spec technically, but if the caps are approaching 105C, it's not very healthy. We reviewed this card in our open air bench, and the VRM ran at about 73 degrees Celsius in open air in our review from last year with a slower fan speed. So that's not good news for the Barrow speed wheel thing. Finally, GDDR6 thermals are at 100 degrees Celsius which is just five degrees away from TJ Maxx of the G6 modules. In our initial review of this card, we found its G6 to run at about 80 degrees Celsius with a slower fan speed. For GPU frequency, we'll switch over to 3D Mark Firestrike Extreme 30 minute looping burn-in testing for a better picture of that, as clocks don't enumerate normally in Furmark. For this one, we can see the full effect of throttling. The GPU starts out around 1860 megahertz, but falls to around 1566 megahertz average, with some dips nearing 1200 megahertz you'd lose most of your 3D performance with this system. Open loop is a must, but it's also not easy to fit and would require careful planning. CPU thermals are last. For the 3900X, the torture workload puts T die at about 75 degrees Celsius max, or about 73 average peak for the heavier workloads. 
Note that we're not using delta T again for this video since there's no point for the comparative. It's just temperature. It's doing okay for thermals overall, but only because the radiator is exposed to open air at the backside. It's all the other components in the hot box that suffer, like the VRM and the GPU. Blender runs hot on this one at about 76 degrees Celsius. We'd expect a good air cooler that's quieter to perform around here, but the restricted air pathways for the radiator are driving up the thermals. It's hard for it to get rid of the hot air because it's just feeding it straight into a wall. As for Firestrike, T-Dye for that one is in the mid 40s, which is actually overall acceptable. The reduced workload is easier for the radiator to manage, even with the restricted air exhaust or intake, depending on your config. Now, of course, thermals will be benefited on the highway where this is likely to be used. So we've simulated a real world test to try and see how the thermals will perform. In so concluding then, the decision to put the power supply inside the body of the case was a gutsy decision. And so was the decision to technically support full-size ATX everything, ATX motherboard, ATX power supply. We admire Barroch's dedication towards trying to fit every component of a full-size system inside of a wheel. It's a cool idea. It hasn't really been done at a, a wide scale before. We won't say it hasn't been done because certainly this has been done in the modding community for a while. Not sure if Barroch did it first or not, but we're pretty sure there's a case modder out there somewhere who probably did this in the 90s. So either way, this is something that's unique to the retail-ready environment. It's not good, though, but it's still a cool idea. This would be a lot better if they allowed the rear of the system to project further outside of the wheel. There's no rule that says the entire computer has to literally be within these thin walls of the rim. And it's not like you're mounting it on a car, although you could. Or not with a computer in it, it wouldn't survive, but you could mount it to a car. But there's no reason to maintain that specification for something that's clearly meant to be a case. So they should allow the board to project further out. That would allow more room for open loop components, things like that. Uh, the motherboard instead ends up trapped behind the power supply and the drives, which are trapped behind the radiator and the fans and the reservoir, and everything else is fighting for space. So whenever you have to change literally anything, in this system, yes, literally anything, you have to take the entire computer apart. So it's just, it's not easy to work with. And if you ever have a component failure, you're going to have a long day trying to get everything back together. So it's all fighting for space. You know, what's that? Is it square pegs don't fit in round holes? Something like that. Well, you, I guess if it's a sufficiently large round hole, then I, well, whatever. But anyway, if the bulk pricing for rims on Alibaba is anything to go by, it's hard to imagine that machining down the inner surface of a wheel, fabricating an aluminum inner structure, and buying a circular tempered glass panel would bring the actual manufacturing cost anywhere close to $560. Barrow made very few of these, if all the limited edition hype is to be believed, and we think it is. This one's number 33, and the seller online on AliExpress was out of the original wheel that we asked for, so we had to get this color instead. Uh, so there aren't many of these. But we also don't feel bad for calling it a novelty with poor cooling, which is what it is. Uh, for those who like the idea of a PC inside of a wheel or car parts in general, you should do some Google searching around if you're particularly handy with tools or modding uh, or you know someone who might do the project with you. It may be better to just try and do this yourself. We saw literally days ago, as we were in the middle of writing this review, we saw someone on Reddit post something that was up at the top. and it was a build inside of a wheel. And when I saw that, I was like, oh no, what reviewer got to it first? And I saw, no, it was just a user who modified a literal wheel into a build. And honestly, in a lot of ways, theirs looked better than this. Uh, and this is a retail product. This is something that's been homebrewed for cases for years. The features Barrage offers that would be difficult for a modder to fabricate themselves might just be the tempered glass and a uh, compact aluminum insert, and that'd probably be about it. But otherwise, this primarily markets to people who want something unique and cool and related to cars, which might be their other hobby, but also who don't have either the time, the ability, or the experience to mod an, a wheel, a rim, into a computer case. That's really all it's targeting. So anyway, 560 bucks, we wouldn't say it's worth it. It absolutely sucks to build in. 
it's cool, it's unique, and it kind of goes along with probably out of the shot, but the cute pet Yeston case in terms of being something genuinely different, and that's exciting, and we do for that reason like the idea a lot, but the execution's pretty poor. Uh, so this is something that could be improved without ruining the approach by extending the motherboard tray out the back and potentially going with a larger wheel size. That would probably increase the cost, but you get the idea. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, a lot of fun. If you want to help us with projects like this, go to store.gamersnexus.net and pick up some of our stuff like mod mats, or you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to get behind the scenes footage, and we'll see you all next time.